Love and light, everyone. It's Brian here at Red Leaf Ranch. First of all, I want to thank you all so, so much for all the love and support with the release of our candles. It truly means the world, and it really gets us closer to being self-sustaining and just, you know, continuing the growth of our homestead and spreading our love for gardening and Mother Nature. So really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so, so, so much. And there's so much more in store and I can't wait to share it all with you. Um, we're here in the garden today. It's a beautiful day in Tennessee. It rained last night, so it's really lush. Everyone is freshly watered. So I wanted to walk through and see what was going on. So let's go. So I would say the biggest change I made recently was I removed that outer fence that I had to keep the chickens out. Um, it was just really getting in the way and making it hard to maintain um, parts of the garden. What I actually ended up doing, it was a little bit more work, but I built individual fences around the, um, around the plants I wanted to protect more. So I, I made this little fence around here with our brassica seedlings that we have growing, as well as our beans. And everything's growing in really well. It's starting to look really lush and I'm really excited for this fall harvest. Here we have some blue kale growing in nicely. It's all coming in really, really nice. I'm very excited. Sweet potatoes. Y'all, I'm really trying to figure out a day. <laughs> harvest these sweet potatoes because it's gonna be a lot there's so many in there I already feel it um, and also just to clear this whole bed up because I think after the sweet potatoes I'm gonna plant radish in there after putting a fresh layer of compost on top maybe but definitely need to plan out what I'm gonna do here but it's so lush and it's nice because now that it's getting cooler you know a lot of the pests are starting to fade away so a lot of new, fresh, lush foliage is growing in, which is great because they're not being damaged or ruined by these little bugs. Over here, I built a little fence around this bed using some chicken wire and plastic netting. Our eggplant is still going strong. I really thought it was going to fade out by this, by this point, but it's still growing and still flowering. This is a smaller eggplant plant, but it's, I think it's for the black beauties. So it's actually for the bigger eggplant, like the actual fruit eggplant. Um, so I'm excited to see if those pollinate. It's nice having them out and exposed because they can grow to their fuller potential. I feel like they were really confined in the little tents I had prior. Ooh, uh, here we have some Brussels sprouts growing in nice. They were a little ravaged by the chickens, hence the netting. <laughs> Um, but when I came out one morning and saw that these were just pecked to near death, I knew it was time to do something. That netting was not, that fence I had around the garden was not working. They were just hopping over it. I think having netting around a more confined space and having these areas more open really lets the, lets the chickens um, free range without feeling the need to ravage the more specific areas. Marigold still going strong. Oh boy. It's almost time to get rid of this corn. I've just really loved how tall it grows. And there's still beans growing up on it. Um, but I think it's almost time to get this prepared to start amending it and following it for the season to have it ready for the spring. Our seedlings are doing super well, actually. Well, most of them. Here we have the Mizuna. And this is growing in so nicely. I actually went ahead and spaced them out because some seedlings were growing really close together. We have some carrots doing really well. Um, these carrots over here don't seem to be popping up. We've had a few, but I'm actually quite surprised at how, how little um, germination we've had. We have a few more little ones. I wonder if it's just a matter of time that more will pop up. I'm not I'm not sure, but I'm honestly quite surprised by it. And it's been kind of tricky um, 
figuring out with some of these newer plants we had a lot of seeds in the compost which I wish I was more aware of before using it um, with this newer growing seedlings it's kind of hard to tell what's the actual plant I'm trying to grow and what's a a different kind of seedling <laughs> especially with this leafy green plant I have here this is a rock which is a multicolored like burgundy golden and green leafed leaf vegetable um, and it's just hard to tell which one of these is the Iraq and which one isn't so I'm kind of just letting it grow out a little bit to really be able to tell the difference. Some of them are obvious, like you can obviously tell this is carrot. This is carrot. But the Iraq is tricky, so I have to let that grow out a little bit before I make any plucking decisions. But seedlings are still, still growing, doing well. People are doing some construction work over there, so don't mind the noise. But it is so cute because the chickens now free range all over the property. They have ventured away from the garden. <laughs> and now come out over here. They love this little brush area that we have. I actually think in the future um, it'll be quite a project. But I want to clear out in there and really make it a nice little, little patch for them to hang out in. Maybe even put some nesting boxes. But they're loving it. <laughs> hey Momo! How you doing? Hi Chloe, how you doing sweetheart? Oh, you okay? How you doing baby? Huh? Huh? Oh, you wanna play? She wants the frisbee. <laughs> you like the frisbee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish she looked at me with that much devotion. Okay, you ready? You ready? Ooh! Good girl, Clown. Run away with that frisbee. Side note, look at how beautiful these flowers are filling in. Whew! They are stunning. I love their color. It really has that beautiful warmth in the garden around the perennial beds and I feel like when these bloom it's really a good a good sign that fall is around the corner because they do bloom in the later late summer still giving those pollinators what they want get a little bee get a little bee all right let's check up on our other seedlings I went through and so I had this little middle row in here with, that I planted spinach in, but for some reason, none of the seeds germinated. So I went ahead and sprinkled a bunch of uh, beets in there. So I can just have all the beets. But all the other seedlings seem to be doing pretty well. Growing in there. Some of them have been um, picked at by some pests, but I think the cooler it gets, the less of an issue we'll have with that. Over here we have a bunch of brassicas and I went through and separated a lot of the seedlings. So now we have individuals growing and they're starting to get real big. Look at you. Yes, this is our Chinese broccoli. We have quite a few of that planted in here. Awesome, I can't wait for the brock. Our deer okra is still going so strong and it's it's gonna keep going. It's getting so tall too. This is well over six feet at this point. And there's still a lot of little flower heads on top. So it's just gonna keep going the more I pick. And y'all, I haven't eaten so much okra. <laughs> you just gotta keep going. Gotta keep it going. It's so nice when the marigolds fill in the base there. It really fills in the bed nicely. Over here, I completed some of the fencing too because the chickens got in and completely ravaged our sorrel. I mean, it's starting to grow back now. It's doing well. But damn, look at how much it's filled in here. This is crazy. The Malabar spinach has really, really taken over. And it's honestly hard to eat this much of it. Um, we really have been eating quite a bit of it and picking through it, but it just keeps growing. I love how lush it looks. 
over here we have the pumpkin. It's really taken off. It's, I feel like it's growing really fast. So hopefully we get some flowers in there and it starts creating some fruit. This is literally like in less than three weeks. It's already filled in its, its home. Beautiful. I can't wait. Fingers crossed we get some pumpkin, y'all. I have been fertilizing it quite a bit to, I would say, jumpstart or make it progress faster. Over here we have what is going to become our herb garden. I went in and I took out the strawberries that we had growing here. Um, they were just fading out and I think for next year I want to start from scratch with the strawberries. I, there was a big patch of clary sage here and I actually went and separated it so it has more individual room for each plant to grow. Um, they definitely experienced some transplant shock. I'm sorry, y'all. I know it was quite intense, but I was definitely sure to really loosen up the soil. I got really deep in there to loosen up the soil so that the roots could settle in much easier. Um, but I know they did not like being shaken up like that. But they'll get through it. I know they will. Clary Sage is a strong, strong little plant. When I plucked out the root, I was so surprised at how deep it had gone. It was it looked like a tree trunk, honestly. They're, they're resilient little things. It would be so great to have Clary Sage to add to our collection of herbs for all the projects I'm working on. Um, working on a Clary Sage candle and trying to figure out a way to incorporate the, the dried foliage into the candle. It'll be really fun. Excited to see how it comes out. Over here, we have our Swiss chard and it has really taken off. Now that it's really taken hold and gotten comfortable in its home, the foliage is getting much, much larger. Super fun to use in salads and sandwiches and wraps. Our tacos, I don't know if y'all saw our taco video, I'll link it somewhere, but I made Swiss chard tacos and now these leaves are big enough to make burritos. So I think I'm gonna have to make a burrito with some of these. <laughs> the tomatoes, I built in a little fence around the tomatoes because the chickens really loved getting in there underneath the tomatoes and fluffing around in the soil, um, which was cute, but it would actually expose the roots of the tomatoes, which was not ideal for them. And they were eating my tomatoes. Anybody got time for that? I'm working hard on these tomatoes. I ain't trying to have these chickens eat them. And we're getting a lot of ripe fruit, which is so exciting. Super late in the game though, I feel like compared to a lot of other gardeners I've seen, like our tomatoes are have taken their sweet time. Um, and they're not like producing all at once, like a big flush, it's like little by little. Um, which isn't ideal for canning, I'd say. I don't feel like we have enough um, at once to you know, pursue a canning project. We just get little by little at a time. Um, but we'll see, who knows what'll happen. There's still a lot of new growth happening. I'm excited. Someone told me that they think they'll keep going until frost, which is really exciting. They, they haven't really shown any sign of slowing down. And it's so lush. We have these peppers too. It's just really starting to look like a a jungle over here. <laughs> oh, here we have some more cherry tomatoes. These black beauties looking gorgeous. Can't wait to see how these look when they get lush and full. Getting close. Ooh. So beautiful. Our Cherokee purples are starting to darken and ripen. Definitely one of my favorite tomatoes to use in the kitchen. They're so delicious, just fresh and raw like that. But when cooked, it really just, oh my gosh, amplifies its flavor. It's delicious. Oh boy, over here we have more of our peppers. This is really growing into like a mini tree. I didn't think peppers could get this tall. But it's so exciting to see that they're still producing. It's still lots of flowers too. Whew. Oh, this one's starting to take off too. Peppers everywhere. Hey, girl. I don't think you like peppers, Chloe. I don't think you like peppers. 
This bed's been overrun by marigolds. <laughs> and this actually, looking at the garden, this is as lush as it still looks. This is after harvesting a lot of marigold because it was like starting to, it, it got so big that the branches were like breaking and spilling into the aisles. Um, and I've been harvesting and drying a lot of the petals to use for candles. Here we have our zucchini. I think it's really starting to fade out. It gave us a few more fruit. Still flowering a little bit. But I think... Who knows? I'm actually quite surprised by the zucchini. It's been... <clears throat> it's been really... Um, a prolific grower keeps on going. When other parts of it die, new parts of it just keep forming and growing. It's really nice. I also wanted to give you an update on the soil that we're amending here. Um, I just started the second phase and planted a lot of seedlings, um, did more buckwheat, did lots of clover, and did, um, I think they're called tiller turnips, and they actually grow very deep and wide into the soil to help break it up and make it looser naturally. Um, and you can see a lot of the seedlings are starting to sprout. So I'll let everything grow until frost hits and then it'll all die out naturally on its own and act as like a green mulch that'll go on top. And then hopefully by next year we'll start planting directly into the soil. You guys are going to get a kick out of this. I think I've finally mastered the chicken call. Look at this. Chip, 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 chip. Chip, 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 chip. Oh, there they come. The, the hordes. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Got a little treat for you. Come on. Hey fam! <laughs> How is everyone, huh? Oh. This is Mo's table, head of the table. Are you pecking my butt? Butt peckers. All right, this was just a brief update on everything we have going on in the garden. I'm gonna get back to work. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share to keep spreading the love for gardening, homesteading, and chicken. <laughs> Brian here at Redley Branch. Take care, everyone. I'm sending you so much love and light.